Audio check. Audio check, is it working now? I can't use the phone. Hopefully this is streaming out. Do you hear it now? Let's see, uh, do you hear audio now? Working. Yes. Sorry if that's a little loud. I have no idea what happened. It is the strangest thing. I the only thing I could think that happened is I test before I go on. I usually will uh walk into my office, make sure everything's set up, make sure my lights are set right, which if you've ever seen me before, my lights are right in front of my keyboard, so I have to adjust when I'm doing things. But I go down and I sit and I relax. I have like 15 minutes. I was relaxing, got the kids off the internet. I come back on and I know my system went to sleep. No big deal. Turned it back on. Go to go live and no mic, which is really weird because uh, it wasn't recognizing my compression software. Sometimes my compression software throws things off. So I've got that shut off for streaming live. I have all this stuff shut down. And here it's like, Arr! but thank you for staying with me. I really appreciate that. I'm going to do something extra special here today. Whew. So as you can tell, I do have a chat here. So uh, if you do say something on the chat screen, feel free. It'll pop up. Uh, I could see what you're saying. I could see that Linda's here. I know we lost Judy. Judy was here. Early. Hey, Judy. Yay. You made it. Thank you. Uh, so it's so nice to see the people that, you know, did stick around, did find this again, did log in. And I got a couple things I want to talk about today. Uh, I got a special one balloon uh, design that I'm going to show you. And you may be wondering why a one balloon. We're going to talk about that in a bit. With that, let me start the show and get this going. Whew. Hi, my name is Dale LeProcton. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we're streaming live today. Let's learn something new, fun, and exciting. So let's get started now. I think it's kind of funny because it's like, we're streaming live now. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. Yes, we are. Now we are. Okay. Whew. All right. My name's Dale Brockta. If you don't know me, I'm a professional balloon entertainer. I'm streaming here live on YouTube every Friday, which my marquee is scrolling around. I have a couple other places that I scroll at. And uh, I'm just going to... Uh, do a little housekeeping here and get ready. The reason why we talk about one balloon animals. Now, I mean, who does one balloon animals? Not a lot of people anymore. But when I first started out, that was the big craze. And one balloon is not what we actually think about. This this was the original one balloon animal that, you know, Wally Boggs uh, created. I just watched a video and he's like, hey, it's a dog. Look, look, take this down. He goes, I got a rabbit now that's hopping around. And that was what they used to consider one balloon animals. And then people like Jimmy Davis and Roger Siegel, who just passed, um, started actually taking one balloon and manipulating it to the point that it actually created one character. And that's basically what we call a one balloon animal. And for decades, there were people who always said, I'm a one balloon entertainer. And, you know, and that's all they want to do was everything out of one balloon. The problem with one balloons is basically it's hard on the hands. It's very difficult because you're doing so many bubbles and so many twists and you run out of balloons, but it also teaches you something that a lot of beginners don't learn, proportions. And that is how to manually take a balloon and manipulate it to control its size. So when we're actually working with other balloons, designs, you know when to tear something off, what you could extend. So I like to always go back to the one balloon. And this is one of my favorite one balloon animals to make. It's actually a squirrel. It's a cute little squirrel. It's not difficult to do, but it takes some skill to actually make him. And I'm going to show you how to make him. And then I'm actually going to show you a second twist because you guys have been so good. You stay along. You remember to subscribe and you always watch to the end where I always try showing you something special. But be honest, folks, you guys have stuck with me, not through one, but two startups, 
hey, bless you, thank you. So I'm gonna start off with a gray 260 because I have gray squirrels in my neighborhood. And I'm just gonna get my pump over here, get my compressor going, just inflate. Now, when you make a squirrel, the squirrel is only gonna be about a half a balloon. And you may be wondering why I don't use more, because the fact that I am going to need to have a tip left over. And if I do too much balloons, then this goes from a one balloon squirrel to a two balloon squirrel, which if it happens, it happens. But the old days it was, man, if you could master something, you did it with one balloon. I mean, one. So to start off, this is something different that I normally do. Usually I start from the head, go down to the bottom. I'm reversing this. I'm going from the bottom to the top to make the squirrel. So I actually start with the tail. And I use this finger, you're the nose picker. No, don't pick your nose. Um, and what I'm going to do is an extended long apple twist. And I'm actually, if you can tell, smushing this balloon. And I don't want to get too crazy with the tail. You didn't see that? Take two! Wait, we already did take two. Hang on. Sorry, force a habit. All right, I know, COVID, now mouth inflating. All right, I'm gonna take my finger, insert it again. And by the way, this balloon is probably gonna break the most on you in the beginning when you're learning this little twist right here. This is going to be the squirrel's tail. And I've wrapped my finger around into it. I'm holding the nozzle here. Now, there's a couple areas that you could go wrong real quickly on this balloon. First of all, if you overinflate it, you run out of balloon. So one balloon goes to two balloons. Stereo, one balloon, one balloon, one balloon. We're going two balloons. So if I make the tail too longer, because you gotta remember, we have extra balloon that's actually in the balloon, in the tail. So don't get carried away with a long tail. And then the next thing are these feet. You don't wanna go big feet, because if you use big feet, which is nothing more than a fold, or teddy bear, you start using up a lot of balloon very quickly. And you don't want to do that because if you use up a lot of balloon, then you're not doing a one balloon animal anymore. So here are, or here is, here be, here about, wherever, to be or not to be, to throw in Shakespeare, I have the tail, the two feet. Now, here's another technique that comes about when you've been doing one balloon animals. It's actually squeezing air back into the balloon. And I just saw a video on Batelitex about making bubbles, and they didn't really talk about that, but it's a technique of squeezing air to push that forward. Now, what you're gonna do is make the body. And you don't wanna go crazy with the body. I'm gonna make another pinch twist. All right, this is Friday the 13th here. Let me do this. I'm gonna throw chat back up on the screen here real quick. Yeah, the deep tulip twists can be a real pain in the butt, especially if the balloons and get thin on you. So, work my finger out. Do that pinch around. And back to square one. Woo! If you've ever seen my lives, they don't always go perfect. <laughs> Needless to say, we did that already today. Don't talk about it anymore. I won't. Okay. So I have the tail, which kind of wraps around. I have the two teddy bear feet or the full twist. I'm going to squeeze air for the body, pushing air back in. Now I'm going to make a small bubble, which is a pinch twist. So this is the legs, the body. Now we're gonna do the arms. Like I said, we're working backwards here. No, 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 seriously. We're working to the point of tail, legs, body, pinch twist. We're going to do one arm. This is going to be followed by a pinch twist. So we have pinch twist where the neck is, pinch twist where the arm is, excuse me, pinch twist, bubble, pinch twist. Now at this point, I'm gonna split the bubble and how I split my bubbles is I just take that pinch twist, I wrap it around, pull, come back once or twice. 
This is going to be the arms. If you look at the picture right here, where's that picture go? There it is. You can see that we have the two little arms right here for the split. Okay, so we have the legs, we have the body, which we can't see. We have one arm, bubble, pinch twist. This now, this next bubble is actually the nut. So I'm gonna do another pinch twist, which is gonna be the other hand, and then I split it again. So split, split, split. One banana, two banana, three banana, four, four banana. Oh, that's banana splits, but that's something else. Just went off on a crazy little tangent there. Now, I'm gonna make a little bubble, which is the other side of the hand. I wanna make them approximately the same size. And I'm doing this subconsciously, folks. I'm letting air out. And if I'm letting too much out, I'm squeezing the back to force the air to keep that bubble tight. And this is how the old days we worked with single balloons was always to force the air back so we always had excess balloons. Because the worst thing you did was you twisted a balloon and you ran out of balloon. And then you're like, oh my gosh, I got to start over. I put too much air in it. And, you know, we didn't know back in the day when we were making this because people like Roger Siegel said, you use one balloon. And we went, okay, we use one balloon, Roger. And then we learned years later that you could use more than one balloon and just add on. But the greats back then did not do that. So here's, here's my head so far. Here's my body. It looks a little strange. Now, what I'm going to do is... This is going to be the head, okay? This is the, or the back of the head. So I do a bubble. I'm gonna make two small pinch twists. And the reason why I say small is because these are the ears. So I spin them around. So that's what it looks like from the back end. But this is where the face comes in. I'm gonna take, Maybe two, three fingers. Spin, and this is where I need to make a cut. A little snip right there at the tip. Let the air out. Tie off my balloon. So right now, I have this odd-shaped squirrel. What we're gonna do is take this part now, bring it into are behind the egg. Now, this is where we get the hunched effect. I'm gonna take this, bring it down, wrap it around, and into the legs. So, I'll bring this up close here, so you could actually see. We started at the tail. Here's, here's the tail. Long, deep tulip twist, followed by two teddy bears, legs, or full twists. We come up with a large bubble, pinch twist, bubble. We did a pinch twist that we split, bubble. Pinch twist that we split, bubble. Gets all tied into this back uh, pinch twist or neck. We come up, two small pinch twists, which are the ears and then the eyes or the face. We take and break off the excess, pull that down, wrap it around and in. Now, the drawing of the face. I love drawing squirrel's face. I have no idea where I find the passion or why I, I think this is so enjoyable, but here it goes. Start with my nose. Kind of a hook. Another hook. Dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. All right, big eyeballs. And that's where a lot of people make the mistake, right there, is they make small eyes. You make nice big eyes for the squirrel. People find this uh, cute when you do the small eyes. So I do another small circle. Another small circle. Now, at this point, the squirrels have teeth. So I draw on the teeth. Now comes the coloring. I have a paint marker, my blue one. I like to give uh, animals blue eyes. 
I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm blue eyed. I don't know. Can you even see that? Ah! All right. All right. So I paint blue eyes on. Then I take my Sharpie white. If you're curious what, what marker this is, this is uh, I have leftover Galaxy markers, paint markers. I used to sell these on my website decades ago. You could get them at Hobby Lobby. They're about a buck and a half. Now I don't know how good. Uh, markers are because of COVID, things sitting on the shelf, people not using them as fast. Uh, so it's hit or miss sometimes when you get these markers, which is a real bummer. All right, now my white. Dot, dot. Paint around the blue. Paint the teeth. Now you're almost done with the squirrel. You could pull out a brown marker. This is one balloon, folks. This is what we used to do in the day. We just put some dashes on there. Here we go, folks. I'd like to present you with the squirrel with a nut. Or when you hand it to the kid, it's a nut with a squirrel. So it depends on how you want to look at it. So those were two things that, I mean, this, whoop, you know what, I forgot something. There we go. Tra -la -la! Look at that. Let me turn down the light so you have less glare. Actually, if I pull it back just a little, you can see him right here, the squirrel with a nut. Simple to do, not hard, fun. It has a big impact still for one balloon figure. It's nice because it's small. This, this is one thing that I learned years and years ago doing balloon animals is keep things small. Keep things on the smaller side, on the dainty side. Don't make them big and chunky. If you go big and chunky, Things look out of proportion, balloon size, half the shape. You know, it's uh, real easy, you know, to do something like this. Now, here's another trick. Since you guys are watching, okay, I always say, you know, if you watch to the end, if you leave me a comment, if you go, wow, thank you, woohoo! Um, yeah, you know, people want to know how long does this actually take to make? Not long. I mean, it, it, once you get past that first step tulip tip, you could crank this out. There is, the reason why I went to multiple balloons is there is a bigger wow factor if you don't know how to draw sometimes or if you don't have a good design. I mean, consider it, this used to be a dog. I mean, let me back off here so you could see. This was the standard dog. This was the squirrel. I mean, the dogs weren't that cool. The squirrels were neat. These, these one balloon figures were actually cool. The problem is if you have to do a lot of them, they're hard on the hands. Due to the fact that, you know, to make this squirrel is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, almost 17 twists in there. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but when I used to work at a casino and uh, I would have to make a hundred of these, I mean, my hands were sore. I found that I could do a penguin, which had three balloons. Yes, used more balloons, had a third of the twist, meaning I could make more of these, not really faster, but just easier on the body, which when I got older and entertaining, I realized that that was smarter to be uh, concerned about your hands and longevity. Now, here's a trick that you could do. All right, let's say I got a gray squirrel. All right, bye-bye. Ah! Now, you can make the gray squirrel, but if you want to have a two-color balloon, yeah, bubble chains are really hard on your hands. Um, that's one reason why I don't like doing them. Uh, there, 
is a trick that, I mean, if you ever have to do a lot of bubbles, stick it in between your little pinker, finger here or in between your ring finger. It takes more energy. I usually put it here. And I was taught decades ago that it, it takes more energy to lift it out of these fingers or these fingers. So if you place it in between these two fingers, uh, you continue working, continue doing what you need to do, and it's locked in. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this because you know you stay to the end, you get something special. Here we go, here's a two balloon squirrel, which again, add my little details in here, just dashes. And you see now you have a squirrel with a nut. Or in my case, a nut with a squirrel. Very simple and easy to do. I, I suggest folks, if you haven't done them in a while, break out your balloons, maybe a bag of balloons that you haven't used in a while or that you feel that may be going bad. And just start making some one balloon animals. You're gonna find there's some really joy in it. You're, you're gonna find that you really challenge yourself trying to make something that looks like this, which is really fairly simple to do. In retrospect, nowadays, this is difficult to do because there's not a lot of people actually spending the time to learn the one balloon figures. Everybody wants to know, oh, I, I can do this with six balloons and they go through and they crank it out. But uh, my advice for you is if you want to get good at this, spend a little time, make some one balloon animals. Uh, like I say, this is a really cool one. It's got a nice effect. Uh, kids love it. Uh, adults love it. It does sit here real smoothly. Now, I'm going to give you another example here. If you start making this, and I, this, is one, this was the one I made the other day for my video here. Let's say you run out of balloon and you realize that you don't have enough balloon. You just have enough to tie back in. This is a perfect time for you to, let me take a scrap balloon here. And trust me, this happens a lot when you first start out, that you just don't have enough glue. Tie it off and then go back into the head joint. Then continue your neck, your ears, your ear, the face, break off. and then bring it down. Oh no, I broke too, too much off. But that's typically where I will tie in. Boy, does that look terrible. I will tie in when I run out of balloon. So again, if you find that you do not have enough balloon, snap it off right at this neck joint, tie in another balloon, and then continue in this way. So this is a little square. I hope you like it. Do me a favor, share, like, and follow as I always recommend. Tell a friend about this. If you're new to my channel, hey, sorry for the uh, audio effects. Normally don't have that. Uh, as you can tell, there's uh, Bozo that I did the other day on one of my videos. And then if you follow me on TikTok, you'll see that uh, I put out here. Whoop. I gotta turn this light down. Here we go. Pinky. Whoop. Pinky. And the brain. So, I haven't done uh, the uh, instructions for these. I don't know if anybody's still interested in Pinky and the brain. I just thought they were really cool. I was trying to do uh, a video. I wanted to do squirrels in my pants, squirrels in my pants. Didn't happen. I just wound up making pinky in the brain instead. Again, because you guys stay to the end, I'm, I'm showing you something that I typically don't show people. You know, if you go out to my Instagram page, you're going to see something that looks like this. If you go to my Facebook page, you'll see the video. So... You guys are special because you're on my YouTube channel. You're streaming live here. So I, I thank you for coming out. If anybody's got a quick question, go ahead, drop it out there. I'll be happy to answer it. 
but you know, pinky in the brain. Brain, 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 pinky, pinky, pinky brain. Got a pinky brain? Woohoo! Stay! All right. So with that, everybody, you guys be good, be safe, be healthy. Do me a favor, leave me a comment. I'm always happy to respond if I can. If there's anything that you would like to see created, hey, I'm always looking for ideas. Drop me a comment. I stream every, what is it, Friday. Friday I stream live. Uh, you could see me right here on my YouTube channel before it goes away, right there. Uh, if you're into marketing, or into any of the social media sites. I talk about that on my Twitch account, which is Monday. There's my Twitch account right there streaming by. And if you want to follow me on Facebook, you go to Balloons Art. That's Balloons, plural, art. And I stream every Wednesday in the morning there on Facebook. So with that, everybody be safe, be healthy, be wise, be good. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. And thank you for sticking with me. Make sure you click on that subscribe button and never miss a video. Subscribe now. Click the little bell and always be notified of a live broadcast. Follow me on Instagram. And if you're a TikTok fan, you'll find me under